When the Toolkit RC P200 arrived in the mail, I was pretty excited because I have wanted to get a bench power supply for a pretty long time. And I just haven't because my bench is already pretty cluttered and I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money. And I actually have a DC power supply over there on my charging table, but it's all the way over on my charging table. So I'm seldom, I actually use it way less than I thought I did. And if you don't know what a DC power supply can be used for, that's one of the things I hope to show you in this video. We're gonna look at the P200, we're gonna see what it can do and all the different ways it could be useful to you. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna look at what you could get in capability if you were to buy just a regular bench power supply as opposed to something like this, which is coming from an FPV, FPV company and whether that would be a better bargain. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. The products that you're gonna see in this video, the Toolkit RC P200 power supply and the Toolkit RC M7 charger were sent to me by Toolkit RC for this video. I didn't purchase them with my own money. The next thing I usually say is, and I have not received any money or other compensation in exchange for this video. And technically that's true. In fact, I almost never explicitly accept money in exchange for making a review, kind of an obvious conflict of interest. However, I have to say, at some point in the last few weeks, Toolkit RC did make a payment to my PayPal account, which anybody can do. Anybody can send me money in PayPal just to support me, and I didn't send it back. So I kind of feel like I'm gonna mark this one as like paid ad sponsorship advertising, even though, well, anyway. And nobody has had any approval or editorial control or input, especially not Toolkit RC, into the contents of this video. On with the video. For anybody who doesn't know what a bench power supply does, it basically plugs into the wall and takes your mains voltage, your AC 120 or 240 volts, and converts it down to a DC voltage that you can control. Uh, so basically, a bench power supply can take the place of like any of these little plugs or anything that plugs into a LiPo battery. This power supply can power it instead. And that opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, before we begin exploring all the different ways that you could use this, let me just take you through the controls and the menus so you can see how it works. Now, this power supply can plug into the wall and it does come with a power cord for whatever region you're in. And if you plug it into the wall, it will also have a mains on off switch. Unlike many lab bench power supplies, it also has the ability to plug into an XT60. So in theory, you could take this with you in your car or in your backpack and you could take it to the field and all of the things I'm gonna show you that it can do, you could do them in the field if you care to do so. As we talk about portability, we gotta say this thing is really small compared to many other power supplies of similar rating. It's got a 100 watt rating when running off of mains power or a 200 watt rating when running off of a battery. Uh, and it also limits at 10 amps maximum. So either the watt rating or the amp rating, whichever you hit first, and it can go up to 30 volts. And if you go and look at similarly spec power supplies, you're gonna see that most of them are much bigger and heavier than this. And Toolkit RC says that one reason for that is that they're using gallium nitride transistors, which are, I mean, that's a thing. You can go search for gallium nitride transistors and compare it to silicon. They're smaller, they're lighter, and they're more efficient than silicon transistors. And they say that's the reason for it. When you see something that's smaller, or when you see a power amplifier that's smaller and lighter than maybe it ought to be, you certainly gotta ask yourself whether it's just not up to the task that it claims to be. And we're gonna certainly put it, this guy through some torture tests before the end of the video and see whether it, whether it can do what it says. And the main controls for a tool like this are gonna be the amps and the volts dials. And those are going to let you turn the output voltage up and down. You can see right now the output voltage is set to 12 volts. And if I turn this, I can turn it up as high as, I believe it's 30 volts. Yep, 30 volts and down as low as, down as low as one volt. As far as the amp rating goes, we can turn that up 
as high as 10 amps, which is the maximum uh, it's, it's rated for, and down as low as one amp. Now you saw that when I was adjusting the voltage there, I had to turn that knob a lot to get it all the way from 30 volts down to one volt. A bench power supply will typically have a coarse and a fine adjustment knob that lets you make big changes by turning the one and then fine changes by turning the other. This seems to be something that they've given up in order to get the size of the unit down and it's probably not gonna be a deal breaker for most people, but it certainly has to be acknowledged. If we hold down the voltage knob, we get the settings menu and we can make some changes to the settings like how fine a voltage and current step we get, how quickly it ramps up and down the voltage to respond to the amperage limit, the lowest input voltage, if you were running this off a battery, like your car battery, you'd want to set that input voltage to something that would keep you from killing the battery. Like for a car battery, I probably would put it on 11.5 volts at the lowest, and that means that you're definitely going to be able to start your car when you go to go home. The safe temperature will cause it to shut down if it gets too hot. And backlight setting and a few other uh, just cosmetic settings. Another thing you'll see on the P200 is a USB output. And this is also something that's pretty common on bench power supplies. But bench power supplies will usually have like a 500 millivolt, uh, two amp, just straight standard USB. Whereas this is full USB PD and USB quick charge compatible. Now it is USB-C, so you'll need a USB-C to, well in this case, C to C cable. But if I just plug this in, and plug that in, and it begins to charge. And while that's happening, I can click the amp style to get more information about the USB output. So I can see here that this headphone uh, is pulling five volts, 0 0.24 amps, how many milliwatt hours, and so forth it has uh, delivered. If we switch that over to my phone, we should see that it does quick charge which my phone is capable of doing. And sure enough, we can see my phone has jumped up to nine volts and it shows protocol power delivery state on. Now, obviously, if all you wanna do is charge your phone, this isn't gonna be the thing you buy. But I think this is really interesting for diagnosing USB devices. Like there have been times where I've wondered, is this device really doing the quick charge that it's supposed to? Is it really doing USB power delivery? And this can show you exactly how many volts and amps or milliamps that the device is pulling. And you could use it to charge your phone if you wanted to. Now let's dive into some other ways that you could use this device if you had it. And in order to do that, I am gonna bring in my DJI goggles. And these goggles are powered with a simple XT60 to barrel plug. And it just is passing through the voltage from the XT60. Um, now, I'm gonna get, well, uh, here's one of the things that annoys me about this device. So it comes with a banana plug to alligator clip that you plug in here, that's fine. And it comes with an XT60 that you could solder to whatever you want, but it doesn't come with an XT60 that plugs into it. So I actually already have this power lead and I'm gonna recommend you buy or make one of these if you get this device. But Toolkit RC should really include this. This is such an obvious thing to do. Um, this is a banana plug to uh, XT60, and it's like what most people in FPV are gonna want. So if you, are, if you have anything with banana plugs already on it, you just solder it to this connector and then you're good to go. The DJI goggles are good up to 17 volts. So I'm gonna dial the voltage up. Let's just dial it up to like 12 volts, like a 3S battery, 12.6 volts. And let's set the power limit I guess we don't really need to set any power limit or, or amp limit, so we'll just crank that up to 10 amps. Okay. Now you're gonna to wanna to be really freaking careful about this. Because if I just, woo, spin that knob by accident and don't notice, and I turn this up to 30 volts, it's just gonna fry your goggles just like that. So be careful. All right, 12.6 volts. We're gonna plug the goggles in and then I'm gonna click the voltage knob to start it going. And this is another thing that kind of bugs me because while you're clicking the voltage knob to turn the voltage on, it's maybe a little easier than I'd like for it to 
move the di move the dial and change the voltage. So I might like the on off switch to be a separate switch from the voltage knob. But anyway, and I'm going to double check red in the red, black in the black. Just want to fry my goggles. So here we go. I click that knob. It's outputting 12.6 volts now, and we can see that it's pulling 0.5 amps. So again, this is a super useful tool where you might have used your multimeter to measure the current that something's pulling, but it's kind of annoying and inconvenient to set a multimeter up to measure current. And maybe you have a clamp meter, but you, it's not, this is just a great way to measure how many amps something is pulling. So we can easily use a power supply like this as a convenient way to power all sorts of accessories on the bench without having to reach for a battery or reach for one of these little wall wart supplies. In fact, we can even use it to power a whole quadcopter with props on. Super dangerous. Watch this. I'm going to set it to output. Let's say this is a 6S quadcopter, so let's take it up to 25 volts. And I'm going to take the amp limit and I'm going to turn it down to let's just say two amps because that is the amp limit of a typical electronic smoke stopper and what that should mean is that if this quadcopter were to try to like spin the motors it wouldn't have enough power and it would be safe to, to, to plug it in boom there we go so a bench supply like this is an easy way to test equipment on the bench huh on the bench because it's a bench supply uh, without having to find a battery that's charged and plug it in or have you ever like plugged a battery in to like test a VTX or something and then you kind of forget that it's there and you run your battery all the way down and kill the battery that won't happen with this what could I fry like what could I literally just fry a motor yes you've got a bad ESC and it's gonna try to fry your motor are we outputting right now? We are not. It's going to try to fry your motor. Will the power supply protect you from that nonsense? All right, we're going to smoke one of these now uh, discontinued limited edition JB Luminear motors. Let's find out. Current limit, two amps. Surely it can take two amps. It's not going to fry on that. Boom, here we go. <laughs> Sniffing for burnt windings. 1.85 amps. It's vibrating. Uh, it's literally vibrating. Can you hear that? Uh, if that was DC current, it wouldn't be vibrating. I mean, it's holding at 2.3 amps. Oh, that's so freaking weird. <gasps> That's not DC, baby. <laughs> That's not DC. <laughs> right? That can't be DC, can it? It's got some wiggle. It's got some wiggle in it. <laughs> I don't know. It definitely isn't frying the motor. It's definitely protecting the motor. So, mm, what's the conclusion? Um, <clears throat> If you want to protect your electronics, like against every possible short circuit failure scenario, well, nothing can protect against every possible scenario. Uh, a fast acting f uh, electronic fuse like the V-Fly short saver is still the way to go. But having current protection built into here is going to protect you against some types of failures through the current limiting. And that certainly is nice. But what does it mean that it was vibrating like that? Like, does it mean that the DC output has some like ripple current, ripple voltage? No, I got it. It's because we were hitting the two amp limit. We were coming up to the limit, hitting the limit, and then backing down and up and down and up and down. If we hadn't been hitting the limit, I bet it would have been outputting pretty solid DC. I mean, I don't have an oscilloscope to verify that, but that's what we were hearing was the frequency of the protection circuit kicking in and out. That's gotta be it. Interesting. Now it's time for the torture test. And in order to do that, I brought in this 5,000 milliamp hour 5S battery. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Toolkit RC M7 charger. We're not even reviewing this charger today, uh, but it's a new little tiny charger from, from them. And we're gonna use this power supply as the power source for this charger. And that's 
I mean, I guess in theory, if you didn't have a power supply, you, you know, you would use that. But this is, I mean, I guess you could. It's only rated for 100 watts when used on mains. Like, this is really expensive if all you want is a 100 watt power supply for your charger. But let's do it, because that's going to let us torture test it. Um, we'll set the input voltage to, what is it rated for? 28 volts max. So we'll put the input voltage at, let's say, 26 volts. And we'll turn the amp limit all the way up. Oh, immediately we see a problem. 10 amps times 26 volts is 260 watts. It can't do that. And, I mean, I assume it's just going to hit the watt limit and not let you do that. Like, I assume it's going to limit us to 100 watts. It doesn't rely on you. Let's find out. Let's try and overrun the specifications and see uh, see if it'll let us get away with it. Nope. Didn't like it. So it didn't do an amp limit or anything. It just sort of took a dump. Um, let's bring ours down. I think what we need to do is we'll need to limit to, let's say, dang it, 10 amps at 10 volts would be 100 watts. But 10 volts, this charger, will it run off 10 volts? I don't think it will. 7 to 28 volts. Oh, well, I'll be damned. All right. 10 volts at 10 amps is 100 watts. But then we're going to have to limit this guy to 100 watts as well. Dang it. Max power. Let's set this to... Let's set the max power here to 90 watts. So we'll give it a little headroom. Input voltage too low. Shut up. Oh. There we go. Here we go. So here we are pulling 10 amps, which is the maximum current that the power supply can provide when it's on mains power. 100 watts, which is also the maximum. It says we're pulling about 99 watts. So we're right up against the limits here. And we're just going to let this run. We're just going to keep running it. And I'll check back with you in, you know, 45 minutes or an hour and see if it's died yet. The only other thing I can think of that's worth checking is the accuracy of the voltage output. Um, to, the really the better way to do this would be with an oscilloscope because you could see if there was any ripple, but I don't have one, so meh. Um, but uh, I have previously confirmed that this uh, multimeter is pretty accurate with a vo five volt voltage reference. So let's just stick this in here. And see, machine says we're opening 10.3 volts. The multimeter says closer to 10.4. 10.5. It's pretty dead on. Oh, wait, no, that was 10.4. Sorry. 10.4, 10.38. Let's just move the dial a little bit. 15.30. 19.0. 20.0. 21.0. Seems pretty on. Well, I mean, plenty for something like this. Maybe not for like a uh, like an actual laboratory. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question: Should you buy it? And the very first thing I did when I was prepping for making this review is I went to Amazon and I just searched for bench power supply, and I found a sixty-five dollar bench power supply. This thing is a hundred dollars. A $65 bench power supply that went up to 30 volts and 10 amps, and that's the same specs as this, except this has a 100 watt limit when powered from mains, or a 200 watt limit when powered from DC input. That one, I couldn't find a watt limit, so presumably it has a 300 watt output. So that is a 300 watt bench supply for $65, about two thirds the price of this guy. But it's freaking huge. It's big. It's more of just like a power supply and less of like Toolkit RC. They're trying to make like more general purpose tools. That's why a lot of Toolkit RC chargers will also have like servo testers built in. They're trying to make something a little bit more general purpose. This guy doesn't put out a ton of power, but it puts out enough power to do basic stuff like turn on your goggles on the bench if you can't find a battery or turn on your quadcopter on the bench and not worry about running down your battery. You could even, I suppose, use it 
as a 100 watt power supply for your for your battery charger although like i did 45 minutes of testing i'm not sure it would hold up as well if just run that way constant i would probably want to just buy a dedicated 100 watt supply they're not that expensive um has extra functions like the usb testing uh and so forth if you decide oh and it's small and it's freaking small so you could theoretically take it with you pretty much anywhere you wanted to go if you decide that it's the charger for you there are links down in the video description and they are affiliate links that means that if you make i'm storage charging my other battery back to 3.8 volts sorry about the fan noise if the mic is picking it up that means that if you make any purchase at the the store after you click that affiliate link i get a small commission it's an easy way for you to support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything so get down there and click those links. Or, you know, if you decide you want the Amazon power supply, I'll put a link to that too. I don't care. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.